by God's wonderful grace and mercy and through the Holy Spirit direction, we want to learn what the Lord Jesus Christ commanded uh, that is really relevant in spite of the fact that we have already gone through the last book of the Holy Scriptures, Revelation, learning about what will happen to the devil, our enemy, and his false angels and all of those where the scriptures tell us that they will be all, all of them will end up in the lake of fire or in prison in the lake of fire where they cannot come out. They will always be there day and night. And we pray that those of us who have understood the scriptures, who have heard the scriptures, will pray that no one else will go to the lake of fire because it's a place of torment. It's a place that we don't want anyone to be there. So may the Lord help us all to prepare ourselves and get ourselves also ready as we learn more from his scriptures on a daily uh, basis because uh, learning the scriptures allows us all to know what God wants for us all, so it is relevant. All right, so we want to read uh, Matthew chapter uh, 15, 1 5. Matthew 15, and uh, hear what the conversation is and how the Pharisees were challenging the Lord Jesus Christ, trying to point blame when they rather had the blame. Let us go to Matthew chapter 15, 1, 5, and here is God's word. Then came to Jesus scribes and Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem, saying to, Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. 3. But he, the Lord Jesus Christ, answered and said unto them, Why do, your, why do ye also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? For, for God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother, and his and he that cursed father or mother, let him die the death. 5. But ye say, whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, it is a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be provided or profited, by me, sorry, uh, six, and honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. Thus have ye made the commandments of God of none effect by your tradition. Seven, ye hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, 8, This people draw it nigh unto me with their mouth, and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. 9, But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandment of men. 10. And he called the multitude and said unto them, Hear and understand. 11. Not that what, not that which goeth into the mouth defileth a man, 
but that which cometh out of the mouth, this defileth a man. 12. Then came his disciples and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended after they heard this saying? 13. But he answered and said, Every plant which my Father, Heavenly Father, hath not planted shall be rooted up. 14. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the dish. 15. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Declare unto us this parable. 16. And Jesus said, Are you also yet without understanding? 17. Do not ye yet understand that whatsoever entereth in at the mouth goeth into the belly and is cast out into the drought? 18. But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart, and they defile the man or woman. 19. For out of the heart pro uh, proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. 20. These are the things which defile a man and woman, but to eat with unwashed hands defileth not a man or woman. Amen. So we have read Matthew chapter 15, 1 to 20. And as we have heard, the Pharisees, those who were supposed to be teachers, professors in the scriptures, well, they had shifted their understanding, their knowledge of the scriptures to only concentrate on things which were not relevant washing of hands before eating, before drinking, before all these ceremonial things. Well, as we know, the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, cross-examined them and said, Oh, what, what are you saying? Look, just hands? What about the things that you guys do, which is ungodly, bringing out uh, their, should we say, ungodliness? unrighteousness and uh, um, fake worship of God. Going back to Matthew 15, uh, starting from verse 3. But he, the Lord Jesus Christ, answered and said unto them, Why do you, what did they do? Also transgress the commandment of God for your tradition. Do we see the difference? They are asking, oh, you, your hand is not, you didn't wash your hand before you eat and all of that. But in their case, they have been doing a dishonor God, disobeying God, and brought up things which God didn't command them. And the Lord Jesus Christ bringing out the truth for them to say that, look, you are disobeying God. You know what God's commandment is, but you are saying, oh, we have to be this, we have to be that, the tradition. What tradition? And we know countries have traditions. Africa, they have traditions. Uh, Europe, they have traditions where they may not have much tra tradition there. But generally, in the 
uh, should we say, Asia, they have traditions. Or should I say Latin America or in Africa? You have to do this, you have to do that, you have to do this. And things that people do, which in this case, it's like tradition. But the question is that, what is God's word? If the Lord Jesus Christ is bringing this out, then he is really pointing out things that they should have been doing. They know what God's word says, but they have sort of uh, shifted the focus to only think about what is uh, something they have done as a society. Oh, let's do it, let's do it. When they know God's word uh, gives them the commandment. For God commanded, back to verse 4, commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother. Right? And ye supposed to be doing that. And he that cursed his father or mother, he shall be is supposed to be killed. What do we have in this world? Do every country, everybody honor their father and mother? Not everyone. So the Lord, it is not even nice, not something new. It's been since the last uh, you know century or should we say thousands of years, when the Lord Jesus Christ was uh, there preaching. He knew what they were doing. And to say the Ten Commandments, we know, right? God says, honor your father and mother so that you have long life and the blessings and all of that. And they rather shifted it. And the Lord is pointing out to them that didn't God say that you should honor your father and mother? And honoring your father and mother is not just, oh, uh, hi. It's not once a year, as people have been made to understand in this world, or oh, only on Father's Day, only on Mother's Day. No, that is wrong. That is ungodly. But somebody says, oh, no, at least they are doing it. It, is, it has to be honoring your father every day, not once, not monthly. And of course, they do it yearly, right? And Everybody else, uh, oh, we have to buy Father's Day gift, Mother's Day gift. It is ungodly. You honor your father every day. Here is what the Lord is saying. They have shifted. Instead of honoring their father and mother, they say, oh, no. Oh, you know, I wanted to, uh, you know, buy this gift for you. But then I have to, uh, this thing all the excuses and so in that case oh dad oh mom oh uh, this thing i cannot help i cannot do this because you shouldn't be in debt in the first place so you have to say that well uh, i'm in debt so i have to pay this i have to pay that well um christ is pointing it out and uh, there are references there but let's just go into each of uh, what he is saying Verse 5, but ye say, whosoever shall uh, say to his father or mother, you know, it is a gift, you know, uh, by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me. So instead of honoring your father or mother, and you say, oh no, you know, I wanted to honor you, you know, I wanted to do this, but because I have this, it is wrong, it is ungodly, it is not acceptable so as long as our parents are alive we need we must honor them in obedience to god's commandment it is not a personal thing it's not it is god's commandment whether or not we want it so let us remind our children about that then we go to verse uh, 6 and honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. Do you see? They came, the Pharisees came and said, Oh no, you know, you don't have to honor your father. You know, you know, you can do this, you can do that. It is wrong. God says, No, Christ is pointing it out. And uh, whatever the reason they have, you no. Know, but honor not uh, verse six uh, his father and mother. You no. Know, he shall be free. 
because of this thing, because of that. No. God says, no, you can't do that. And this they have done. And it have, and Christ is saying that. It's not just that. There are so many other things which they have brought in, which they have tried to replace God's commandment. And they you know, have done it. And the Lord gave them the right name, the correct name. He says, verse 7, Ye hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, verse 8, These people, what do they do? They draw it near unto me with their mouth. They speak sweet talk. They only, you know, just something sweet. There's no quality. There's no obedience. Oh, I wanted to do this. Oh, this and all that. Are we doing it or are we just giving excuses? Excuses will not help us. So may the Lord uh, really help us all to encourage our family, our children, our brothers and sisters, that this is God's commandment. It is not if, maybe, what. No excuse. And so uh, we pray that we will all uh, follow that commandment which still is active. And so, uh, you know, verse 8 again. Uh, this people honor me, you know, with their mouth and honor it me with their lips, but their hearts far, far away, they don't. So, um, may God help us. Verse 9. But in vain they do, you know, worship me, teaching the doctrine of men. The doctrine of men, the commandment of men, or the preachers, or whatever, is ungodly. If it is not following God's word, it has to be God's word. We have to follow God's word. And may God help us to go back to those commandments and principles that we know. People have been discouraged. Oh, society. Oh, this. Oh, that. All of them don't count. What counts is God's commandments. Honor your father and mother. It is there. And when we obey, we have the commandment and it helps us all to be on that level of God's commandment. So may we remember it's a commandment. It's not an option. It's not maybe. It is not oh, or this or that. Because God's commandment does not change. All right. So again, this is what he is saying. And then few things here and there, the Lord giving them names. And if we really consider it, we know that it's really something we need to bring back to the family. We need to remind them and help them to understand that this is for their own spiritual benefit, for their own eternal life, for a helpful to them. And not to just say that, oh, well, they are grown up. God's commandment remains the same. Whether or not they are children or grown up, they still have to apply those commandments of honoring their father and mother because, and especially, they should be careful not to say anything bad against their parents. Some people feel that, oh, well, uh, because of what their parents said or this and, and so on and so and they want to use a bad language on their parents. They should not because, well, I will uh, leave it as that because it's not going to be profitable. God doesn't want that. So may the Lord help us to really pay attention and encourage them all. And so every commandment should be applied in obedience.
to God's commandment. And God wants us to really encourage one another with this commandment. It's a reminder. We know it, but we have allowed society to shift things. Oh, the government, oh, the society, oh, friends, oh, this. What does God command? Christianity is not just saying, oh, I'm a Christian and that is all. No, there must be obedience. That is why Christ gave them. Look at the fact that he's teaching, he's teaching his uh, disciples or apostles. If he's teaching them, he wants them to apply those principles. And so as pastors, pastors should be also teaching the principles. We can't say that because society uh, is doing something different, let's just hang up, let's just, uh, you know, uh, relax. We need to bring back the commandments and let everyone apply them and follow them. It is for their spiritual benefit. It is not because, oh, uh, parents, they just want, uh, you know, the children to just be paying them or doing. God's commandments is what we need to apply. So uh, let us uh, follow that. So I think we can end it here because it is, uh, there's not much to say again because it's, we've all heard what God says. And if God is telling us what we are to do in honoring our parents, then we have the necessary uh, blessings that God wants us uh, to have. So uh, I believe that will be uh, helpful. But then maybe uh, we should give it one reference. Exodus 20, 12, which says, Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Amen. Very simple. This has been there thousands of years, and this commandment has not changed, and it will not change. So God wants children to honor their father and mother. Honoring them, loving them, providing for them, you know, care, do everything to make sure they are well cared for, they are well taken care of. So I believe we've heard the message. We thank God for what he has brought to our attention and we pray that we will really, really apply those principles to our life and encourage others to do the same. Amen. Amen.